Before the video starts, I just want to say that if you use Rotten Tomatoes to influence you on what movies you're going to watch, you should have been on United Airlines Flight 175. The people who use Rotten Tomatoes are the kind of people who, when asked if Pepsi's okay, they say yes. They're the kind of people who turn their controllers when playing a racing game because they think it helps them turn better. The people who use Rotten Tomatoes are the kids in school that tell your teacher she forgot to collect the homework. Fuck Rotten Tomatoes. Now that that's out of the way, what's up guys? This is probably the only time you'll ever hear me have background music because it ends now. So I was on Netflix again and something about me is that I love scary movies. I get scared easily, but I think they're dope. And so when I find one that I haven't seen that looks decent, I may or may not get hard. But the two movies that I just watched may or may not have made my penis invert itself into a vagina. Either that or it's just really cold. The two movies I'm talking about are Creep and Creep 2. Now I genuinely don't know how these movies got these ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if whoever left the ratings were asleep for half of the movie or they have impaired vision, but there is no way on God's flat earth that these movies should have anything higher than a 25%. Not only can someone who's never written, directed, or acted do all three and recreate this movie shot for shot, they're making a third one. I guess being friends with the owner of a production company comes in handy, right? Especially when 80% of your movie is just a still shot of an actor listening to something for a whole goddamn five actual fucking minutes until you realize that there's no jump scare coming and that the scene is literally just a still shot of an actor listening to something for a whole goddamn five actual fucking minutes. But why hog all this excitement for myself? I know you guys are just creaming your panties waiting for me to get into this one. So the first movie, Creep, is about this guy named Aaron who answers an ad on Craigslist made by the this guy named Joseph. I just want to say that Joseph is spelled this way, which is like, come on guys, really? But anyways, the movie starts out with Aaron taking this long drive to Joseph's house, and when he finally gets there, Joseph isn't there. Then when he decides it's better that he waits in his car, he zooms in on this normally placed axe as if it wasn't supposed to be in a piece of wood. Huh. Then all of a sudden Aaron gets greeted by Joseph in a way that gets most people shot. Just... Hi! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm assuming you're Aaron. Just so you know, these are the kind of jump scares you're gonna get when watching these. Literally people jumping out and scaring you. Hi. So after they finally make it inside, Joseph tells Aaron that he has two months to live and he wants to make a video for his unborn son. They gave me about two to three months to live. I'm hoping I beat it, you know? And the power of positive thinking, maybe? Aaron agrees, and finally, after eight minutes of nothing, Joseph decides that Aaron should film him taking a bath so he can start creeping us out. Lean back and close the eyes. Mm. You just stay here. You watch the fire. You and me. Dog, what kind of dad wants to lay with their son in a bathtub naked? That's pretty gay, but seriously, we're already like 10 minutes into this movie and nothing has led me to believe why it has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, stinkers. So after watching a grown man take a bath for three minutes with his pretend son, he gets depressed and tries to drown himself, then scares us again. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. That's the thing about these jump scares also, since there's nothing actually scary about them, they just make the audio loud as fuck. Like here's how loud it really is before I turned it down. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I can make a movie with people screaming into the mic also. But after watching a grown man fantasize about bathing with his son, they try to pass off another loud scream as a jump scare. Ah! What, what, what happened? What happened? <laughs> oh, that's Beach Fuzz. And now we're in the woods where, after a minute of walking, Joseph decides to run off, and Aaron obviously goes looking for him, and we get another. Ah! Oh my god. Like I said, being friends with a guy who produced Paranormal Activity and The Purge is like having a golden ticket in the horror genre. Who cares if your movie is just two guys having a conversation? Just tell them it was made by The Purge people, that always works. But after that, Joseph starts asking these oddly specific questions about that random axe that Aaron zoomed in on in the beginning. Can I ask you a question and you answer me honestly? Sure. When you saw that axe up front of the house, 
Is there a small part of you that thought I might kill you with it? We get it. You're gonna kill Aaron with the axe later on. How about instead of spoiling your own movies, you try to actually make them scary? That's shit water. Something. Then, after that ten minutes of nothing, they go to a diner where things get real scary. I used to... I used to just pee my pants a lot. Um... When I was a little kid. Luckily for us, though, the five minutes they're in there, real time, nobody tries to yell and scare us. That's another thing about this movie. The scenes are just so long and dragged out, you're eventually just like, can you progress with the storyline already? Like, what the fuck? Like, look at this scene that lasts three minutes before they actually decide to go in the house. Yeah, no, it's okay. I I think, uh, I think it's a long drive and it's kind of treacherous going down the hill. Like, what is that? Did y'all think that looked cool? I know this is an independent movie and your budget probably wasn't that big, but at least make it look like you tried. At least Paranormal Activity tried to scare us with special effects and not obnoxious yelling. <laughs> Hi. But anyways, after that they go inside and get drunk in another extended scene where the camera is just sitting there while they talk about normal things that shouldn't be talked about in a horror movie, or at least to this length. We cannot find your keys. It's dark in this house. Technically, you are over .08. If you get pulled over by the police, you will get a DUI. Mind you, we're like already 36 minutes into the movie and still I have yet to see any legitimate reason for this movie's 92% rating. So after Joseph finally passes out, Aaron for some reason answers his phone and the person who called is Joseph's sister and when Aaron tells her why he's there, she tells him to, that he needs to get out because her brother has a problem. Give me the address of where you are and then just walk out of there right now. Just keep walking, okay? And after never hearing from or ever seeing the sister in the first place, Aaron is now home, but apparently Joseph knows his address and he left him a package with a video that he graciously films himself watching instead of the actual video, so all we get is his reaction that lasts another three goddamn minutes until he realizes that he needs to rip open the anus of his stuffed animal or he finds the locket with both of their pictures. After to end it, Aaron gets one more video from Joseph, telling him to meet at this lake so they can talk. And after Aaron sets up his camera, we wait, you guessed it, another three motionless minutes before Joseph comes and gives Aaron that axe body spray special to the dome. Now I didn't exaggerate anything in this movie. All the jump scares were just people yelling with the audio turned up, and each scene lasts three to five minutes, which wouldn't be so bad if they did something more than just talk. Like for the second movie, it's basically the same thing as the first, only this time a girl named Sarah answers the ad, and after he gets naked in front of her for the magic time of three fucking minutes, the same things start to happen again. First he takes her on a hike and again runs away, only this time he doesn't scare us, but is face down in the sand, acting like a depressed high school kid. Don't leave. I won't. Now he's in a hot tub going off on another random tangent that bores you to death when all of a sudden Sarah gets in with her clothes on and just when you think things are about to get exciting, she just rubs his shoulders and gets out. Denied. Then after a little flirting, he admits to her in detail how he is a serial killer, but then she doesn't believe him because of how much detail he goes into. First off, the stories you've been telling are ridiculous. Okay. So after trying to hang himself, which almost scares Sarah away, she then agrees to accompany him into the middle of the woods where he asks her to kill him, but after realizing she's too pussy to make the first move, he stabs himself pretty violently. <laughs> Now you would think someone who had just stabbed themselves in the stomach would be in too much pain to do anything but die. Well, you're forgetting how stupid this movie is because not only does he stay alive for another five to six minutes, he manages to chase down, knock out, and drag Sarah back who knows how far to this grave he dug days before. But then as he climbs out of the grave and gives the camera his victory speech, still alive for god knows what reason, Sarah manages to get out of the grave also, pick up a shovel, and knock him out without him noticing. <sighs> then to leave us on a cliffhanger, we see her being filmed on a train, I'm assuming this is years later, but after she hears someone whistle at her, she looks at the camera, and it ends. <laughs> 
So I am not kidding you when I say these movies are horrible. I have never been more bored watching a horror movie in my life. The only reason people like these movies is because they're associated with paranormal activity and The Purge. And let me tell you, other than being produced by the same company, these movies could not be more different. Yeah, the way it was filmed is identical to Paranormal Activity, but... Th this movie's shit. And to be honest, Paranormal Activity wasn't even that scary either. Like, yeah, the storyline was somewhat cool, but you're telling me watching a bedsheet rise from a goddamn security camera is scary? I can watch security cam footage all day on Live Leak that would scare me way more than that movie. Like, the other Paranormal Activities are somewhat good because they had a budget to work with, I think, but I haven't seen anywhere where it tells me Creep and Creep 2's budget. I'm assuming they didn't get anything less than what Paranormal Activity got, which was $11,000, but... This was what you guys made with that money? Like, if you watch both of these movies back to back, you can literally list out everything that you think they spent money on to make the movie. And after you get past the actors and the camera, you're left with, like, $9,000. Like, these movies weren't even released nationwide. It just went from film festival to Netflix. So yeah, you see these two scores right here? Don't pay attention to them. They are fraudulent. The people who wrote these were paid handsomely with the money they didn't use on the movie. Well, that's it, guys. I heard they were already filming Creep 3, so you know I can't wait to see how that one turns out. Until next time, peace. Release me, please, and believe the evil is coming for you. It's me and a hundred warriors armed with swords, and we sorcerers singing glory of the morning that your abortion comes.